Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological horror film, The Twin. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film tells the story of a married couple, Rachel and Anthony, who just lost their older son Nathan in a car accident in New York. Together with their only remaining son, Elliot, Nathan's twin brother, they decide to move to the isolated Finnish countryside to patch up their family. The real estate agent warns them that they are not getting a good deal by buying this property. But for the family, this is the only way to recover from the trauma and start fresh. Arriving at the new residence, the couple is optimistic that everything will be fine. At one point, Elliot runs away from the house, and Rachel panics. She is terribly afraid of losing her second child as well, so when she finds him, she begins to tear up. In the course of the day, Elliot wanders around the house and chooses the room in the attic. That evening, Rachel discovers Elliot playing with his dead brother's toy, but she doesn't scold him. Then Elliot makes a strange request. He wants to have another bed next to his own, presumably for his older brother Nathan. Rachel tells her husband about it, but he doesn't like the idea because he wants to leave the past behind. Rachel continues to have recurring nightmares about Nathan's burial. She tells her husband that she hears Nathan banging inside the coffin, but when she opens it, she finds Elliot's body. To ease the pain, the family decides to bury Nathan's last mementos in the yard, including a wooden toy. Later, Rachel and Anthony row with Elliot on a small body of water. Anthony points to ancient crimson handprints on a stone wall, where people can make wishes according to local legends. Elliot places his fingers on the prints and silently makes a wish. Later that day, Rachel overhears Elliot talking to someone. When she goes to his room, she finds him playing with an imaginary person. Then, Elliot closes the door so that she cannot disturb him. One day, Rachel and Anthony are greeted by elders from the neighboring village. Anthony introduces her to a doctor who cared for him as a child. Soon after, Rachel meets a psychic, a local eccentric whom everyone considers crazy. In fact, as the two of them converse, other people look at them strangely. The psychic invites Rachel on a walk, during which she claims to have dreamed about Rachel and her son. She then cryptically warns Rachel that Elliot's wish has been granted. Later, Anthony and Rachel are invited to participate in a traditional ceremony in which they must ride a wedding swing together. Anthony tells her to leave Elliot with the elders during the ceremony, but she continues to worry. In fact, after losing sight of Elliot during the ride, Rachel panics and faints. Anthony stops the swing, and together with the elders, he tries to assist his unconscious wife. When they finally manage to find Elliot, Rachel asks him not to run away like this ever again. In addition, Rachel is puzzled when Elliot refuses to say where he is gone. That night, she mentions this to Anthony, who assures her that things will soon change. Rachel asks him to spend more time with Elliot, and Anthony promises to try. The next day, we discover that behind Anthony's stoic, cold face is a sensitive, emotional father. He bursts into tears at the sight of the photo of his deceased son, and he's unable to concentrate on the new book he has to write. All the while, Elliot's behavior becomes increasingly strange. He often draws terrible pictures of his parents dying and the house burning down. When Rachel finds it out, she takes the drawings and scolds him. That night, she continues to have disturbing nightmares and strange occurrences, such as swallowing a tree branch in her milk or spotting Nathan outside in the yard. That night, Rachel enters Elliot's room and finds him sleeping in Nathan's bed. Rachel puts her son in his original bed, and suddenly Elliot states that he is Nathan. Most likely, Elliot notices how his parents grieved Nathan's death and considers that they loved him more than he did. Therefore, he pretends to be his brother in order to receive the same affection. Concerned about his behavior, Rachel attempts to take Nathan's remaining toys and argues heavily with Elliot, who falls down and begins to cry like a baby. Rachel immediately goes to hug him and apologizes. Worried about Elliot, Rachel asks her husband to see an expert. They visit a psychiatrist, but he states that he cannot help them with Elliot. However, he states that Elliot is only reflecting Rachel's fears, so he advises her to calm down and see a doctor. Nevertheless, Rachel is convinced that this is not about her. Since she has not found answers from the psychiatrist, Rachel visits another psychic she met a few days ago. Rachel asks her to shed light on what they talked about days ago. The psychic points out that there are no churches in the village because they are constantly destroyed by the town's vibrant pagan culture. She also shows Rachel that everything in the village, from streams to crop shapes, is circular in nature and revolves around a sacrificial rock. The psychic warns her that Elliot is visited at night by the devil, who intends to possess him and will not give up until the devil accomplishes his goal. When Rachel returns home, Anthony asks where she has been, but she refuses to say. That night, the psychic suddenly wakes up and gets out of bed. She goes downstairs. When she enters the bathroom, she sees something not shown to us and starts screaming in a chicken voice. 
The next morning, the psychic visits Rachel and tells her that someone warned her not to meddle. However, the psychic reveals that her late husband was the first to discover the demonic secrets of the village, but at first she did not believe his words. The psychic shows Rachel a photo of her late husband, who was apparently possessed, with his face in the photo blurred. The psychic tells Rachel to trust her own intuition and to pay attention to what her dreams are trying to teach her. Following the psychic's suspicions, Rachel finds an old camera and decides to take photographs of Elliot. The son runs away as soon as she starts taking the pictures. Subsequently, she goes to town to develop the photos. One evening, Rachel puts Elliot to bed, and he indignantly states that his father doesn't love him. At that moment, Anthony overhears everything, but decides not to intrude. Then Rachel notices that Elliot has mud on his hands. In fact, she discovers that he has dug up Nathan's wooden toy. Rachel takes the toy and burns it in the fireplace. Soon after, Anthony arrives and comforts his wife, who is having an emotional breakdown. That night, Elliot wakes his mother and tells her that Nathan wants to see her. Confused, Rachel gets out of bed, and Elliot accompanies her to the kitchen table, where he has prepared a mirror and a candle. Elliot tells her to look at the flame in front of the mirror, so that she can talk spiritually with Nathan. At one point, Elliot reveals that Nathan said she was beautiful. Suddenly, someone grabs Rachel's hands, and the mirror falls to the floor. The seance is interrupted by Anthony and a group of locals. Anthony tells his wife that the villagers want to take Elliot and will give them Nathan in return. Subsequently, Rachel is injected with a substance and loses consciousness. When Rachel wakes up the next morning, she ignores the events of the previous night as another dream, but notices something strange when she sees broken pieces of mirror in the trash. Later, they go to town together, and Rachel furtively retrieves the developed photographs. At home, she checks them. To her surprise, she discovers that Elliot doesn't appear in any of them. Her son asks to see them, but she won't let him. Later, Rachel runs to the psychic to show her the pictures. For a moment, the psychic thinks she is crazy, but Rachel claims hysterically that she did take pictures of Elliot. The psychic believes her and informs Rachel that the devil is taunting her, suggesting that the devil has already kidnapped her son. The psychic asks to meet Elliot to take him to a priest who can prevent evil from attaching itself to his soul. In the car, the psychic becomes concerned when Rachel reveals that her husband has been talking about an exchange. The psychic links Anthony's unexpected literary success to the devil's resurrection. She adds that Anthony sacrificed Nathan to the devil and that the car accident was part of a satanic plan. Not content with taking Nathan, the devil now wants Elliot, and now the devil is already part of his consciousness. The devil's resurrection will occur when Rachel gives birth to the devil, who will force her to be his mother. When they arrive home, Rachel brings the psychic to Elliot's room. However, the psychic abruptly changes her mood and accuses Rachel of being sick, after which she leaves in a hurry. Downstairs, the villagers confront both of them. The psychic draws her weapon, but the villagers turn on her and Rachel. Rachel is again injected with a substance, and before she falls unconscious, she sees both twins and her husband's decapitated head. In the next scene, Rachel awakens near the ceremonial altar, surrounded by villagers in ceremonial dress. Elliot is asleep in a coffin, and as part of the ritual, Anthony cuts his throat. Rachel begins to scream in agony and is about to pass out. Then, an old woman collects Elliot's blood in a cup and makes Rachel drink it. Rachel begins to cry, and then we see something moving in her womb. The old lady draws a circle with the blood on her belly, not to massage her belly, but to seal the thing inside. Then they take Rachel and plunge her into the nearby lake. Next, Rachel wakes up in her bedroom. Suddenly, she hears Elliot's voice begging for help. With some difficulty, she manages to open the door blocked by a chair, and hears the doctor give a grim warning to Anthony about what is about to happen. Rachel goes to the attic and finds Elliot in a coffin, proving that the earlier scenes were a dream. Rachel escapes with Elliot, but Anthony spots them and begins to chase them. Soon after, Rachel realizes that Elliot has disappeared, and looking around, she notices the villagers. Anthony reaches Rachel and throws her to the ground, trying to pin her down. Elliot suddenly appears and yells at his father to leave her alone. Rachel picks up a stone, attempting to throw one stone to hit Anthony's both two birds, but she hits him in the head, knocking him over. Rachel climbs on top of him and punches him a couple of times, then picks up a large stone, intending to crush his birdie head, but finally, she refrains from killing him. Anthony challenges her to kill him, saying that he is tired. Rachel looks up and sees Elliot. She throws the stone to the ground and goes to hug her son. At that point, Anthony tries to get up and tells his wife that Elliot does not exist. It's revealed that Nathan was their only son who had died, and they never had a twin. Anthony reveals that he was not behind the wheel, but Rachel was. 
Back in the past, they were arguing because she wanted to leave her husband and take Nathan with her, but her blind rage caused the fatal car accident that she never forgave herself for. Subsequently, Rachel closed in on herself and denied all responsibility, blaming her husband for the catastrophe. As a defense technique, Rachel's mind created an illusion of Elliot and Anthony fed it because only then could they be a family again. However, Rachel's mental health deteriorated as it became more difficult to keep that lie from others, and she was committed to an asylum. Once interned, Rachel stopped talking, and Anthony decided to continue pretending that Elliot existed to bring back her desire to live. Anthony thought that moving Rachel to Finland would save her because he did not know how else to help her, but unfortunately, things did not change. Back to the present, Elliot screams suddenly that Anthony wants to kill him and escapes to an abandoned silo. Rachel pursues her imaginary son, saying she loves him. She is still convinced that Elliot is real and that Anthony and the villagers want to perform the ritual she dreamed of. But in reality, the villagers are not following them. It is all a figment of her imagination. Shortly thereafter, Rachel enters the silo and climbs onto a platform to be reunited with her son. Soon, Anthony arrives and Elliot climbs down while his parents argue. To prove that Elliot is not real, Anthony drowns him in wheat. Furious, Rachel confronts Anthony and tries to pull him away from the silo lever, but accidentally, she pushes him down and kills him. Then, Rachel frantically searches for Elliot in the grain, but doesn't find him. She approaches her husband's dead body and realizes that she killed her husband with her own hands. In the final scenes, Rachel returns to New York and pays her respects at the graves of Anthony and Nathan. Looking closely at her facial expressions, she doesn't seem hurt by their deaths, but rather released. In fact, when she returns to the car, Rachel imagines that Anthony, Nathan, and Elliot are still alive in the car and prepare to go on a trip. Her delusions have gotten worse, and now there is no Anthony to try to stop her. So it is not clear what will happen to her from now on. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.